Okay, we good? Good morning! <laughs> Welcome back to the channel boys. Now you know my car has been crashed. Now you find out how to fix it. First things first, I need to teach you one thing. When you go maxi flash, this is called maxi flash. Maxi flash. You need fender flare to cover the maxi flash. And today, I will teach you how to install this properly. Okay? Okay. Alright guys, so how to install fender flares on a car. Now mine has already been installed and already been pre-drilled and all this kind of stuff. So it's going to be a little bit easier on me. But I will walk you through the steps that I went through to get this process done. First things first, you need to tape your fender flare on your car and match it of how exactly you want it to sit. So let me do that and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, first thing you need to tape off your car, which I've already done so. Then you see the line there, um, basically line up your fender flare exactly where you want it and then you draw a line all the way across. Okay guys, so once you have everything covered, which is everything covered with tape, you cover all that up, you mark where your fender flare is gonna sit and then if you want you can mark your holes as well, but there's no point, don't do that because marking holes, it doesn't fit right afterwards. So. First things first, draw the line here. Then from that line, you're gonna need to measure about an inch and a half or 1.25 inward and draw another line all the way across. So basically you're gonna have two lines. First line is where your fender flare is gonna sit. Second line is the cut line. The reason why I have an inch and a half in is because my fender flare, let's say you measure from here to the hole, it's about a half an inch or so. So you want to sell, you want to have a little bit extra to where you're going to be cutting. So you're not cutting less than you're supposed to, because you can always cut more, but you can't cut less. So from here to here is about a half an inch. If you give yourself about another half an inch extra, you should be okay. But I would go probably like another, like uh, probably like 0.75 of an inch inward, and then start cutting or cut little by little. That way you know that you're not cutting too much and you're not messing everything up. So, you have your second line, you get your grinder tool and you start cutting out a big line here. Now, on, if you're doing this on the rear, you're gonna have two layers of what do you call this, metal or sheet metal. First layer is gonna be your outer layer and then you have here, as you guys can see, I don't know if you can, I think you can, there's a second layer in the end there. Um, on my car, that layer was really fused up really far up so when I was cutting, I was actually cutting into both and I ended up cutting both layers off. Now try not to do that, try to cut only the outer layer, that way the inner layer is still long. The reason why you want that is you want to be able to fold the inner layer over and then have somebody tack weld that, those little flaps on the outside. It's going to look bunk so don't worry about that, it's all getting covered by the fender flare. So have them welded and then after that seal it with like let's say some kind of a sealant I don't know I'm gonna use foam and I'm gonna use rubber gasketing stuff and all that kind of stuff on the inside so that's that plus uh, around my fender flare is going to be a different type of a rubber as well it's uh, I think it's a garage door um, rubber or something like that you can get so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mock this up now. Um, again, you're not drilling all the holes yet. I'll show you guys how that's done in just a second. All right, boys, so hardware wise, this is what you're gonna be using. These are called well nuts. You get these from hardware stores. They're hard to find. So if you can't find it, go online, find it. It's the same stuff that they use for motorcycle windshielding. Okay, that's that. Um, there's shorter ones and there's longer ones. So here, short versus long. You want to get the long PP, okay? You cannot have short PPs. You like it long, don't you? All right. That said, um, this is a washer that I've gotten that has a rubber on the other side and an aluminum on the other side. The stud or the screw that's going to go into this little rubber that has a small little threaded nut inside has to be the same exact size as the rubber, and that's that. Moving on, after you have cut and did your thing, you're gonna drill your first hole in the middle of the fender flare. Once, well actually, you need to pre-drill every single hole on your fender flare first. Once you pre-drill that and you have perfect holes, as I do here, 
then you would mount your fender flare to the car with the first hole. First hole has to be in the middle of the fender flare. If you go starting from one edge to the other, the fender flare is never going to fit right and you're going to have issues. So you start from the middle and then you're going to go either right or left. Okay? That said, I already did that. I stuck the thing through, which is this PP right here. I pre-mounted it, put it inside it, and it's mounted. Make sure it's nicely and nicely tight in there. Don't you know overdo it and don't make it really loose. You need to have it tight. The reason why is you want it to sit how it's supposed to hit in, uh, sit in the car, so that way when you start drilling the other holes into your car, they all are perfect. Now you already have tape in the background, still right? We're good. You already pre-drilled your fender flare holes. We're good. You go with marker, and with the marker, you're gonna start marking one by one. Then you drill. So you don't go mark every single hole to the left side. Don't do that. You're gonna drill. You're gonna drill only one at a time. So you mark it, drill it, put a thing through, screw it down, nice and tight, just like if you were mounting it for life. Then you move down to the second one and so on and so forth. So you repeat the process until you're done with both sides completely. Now, then after that, you're gonna remove the fender flare and I'm gonna show you now what I'm going to use to insulate it on this side. All right, boys, so now we're going to be insulating this around or whatever you wanna call it. I don't know exactly, but what we're gonna be doing is basically putting this seal around the edges of that so it looks nice and smooth. Just like this, it's on the front. So I'll show you guys how that looks, like that. So. This is the stuff that we're using. This is a garage door bottom seal. That's what it's called. You get this from Home Depot by Frost King. Cool beans? Yeah. You're gonna put that here and I'll show you guys how that's done. But before, we need to prep the surface. So we need to prep the surface. You're gonna wipe this with alcohol all the way around on the inside and make sure that it's nice and clean, shiny as a baby butt. Okay, after that's done, you get yourself 3M tape from O'Reilly's. Don't go out of zone, they're gay. Go to O'Reilly's. But they're gay too sometimes. So, you're gonna put that here all the way, all the way. Oh, just the shit. All the way around. Once you get that done, I'll show you the process in just a moment. Okay, boys, so this material, let me get you on the light real quick. This material is rubberish, it's very soft. It's kind of like a sponge, if anything. Um, it has two ends. One end is more dented in like this, and the other end is like that. You're gonna cut right in the middle, just where I'm cutting like that. You're gonna cut that all the way around because this is the lip that you're gonna be wanting, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and I'll show you guys what's up from there. So, we have laid the double steepy, 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 I can't talk today. The sticky double? The sticky double tape we have laid all around here. The reason why I'm not putting here is I'm still gonna figure out what's gonna happen here because that's the door. So we'll see how that's gonna work out. I might not put any insulin there for now until I figure out what I'm going to do with the door. Um, that's that. Now we're going to apply this material on there. And uh, and yeah, I'll show you guys how that looks. Alright guys, so now we're going to start drilling these holes into there. Um, the best way I found to do this was with a soldering iron. Get yourself one of these ones. You can get them for like really cheap from Walmart. Uh, this will do. Um, just That's not from Walmart, but you, you'll get the point. Just stick it straight through the hole here and that should make the hole perfect. Also, it'll make the hole, um, it'll kind of melt the the crater of the hole. So it'll make it a perfect hole other than drilling through or poking through with something else. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then put the hardware through so it stays that way. Alright boys, so this is what it looks like once the hardware is completely through. Um, this is what it looks like on the back. It's perfectly nice. Then we're gonna continue that on over here. And uh, it's gonna look pretty nice. It's gonna look actually amazing once you fit that on there, like that. It's gonna be nicely insulated and it's gonna look good. Now I'm gonna have to take this little piece off as well and uh, double stick some on there as well. And uh, so we can get the same type of a deal. Or I don't know, we'll see. Let me mount this first and then we'll see if I'm gonna put one on that side. All right, let's get that installed. Okay boys, so now, all of you that are doing this in the front, you okay. need to be putting this type of stuff in the inside of it. Uh, let me see if my camera can focus. But this is basically some kind of a rubber that has aluminum within it. 
Now this is really hard to find. I don't know where you could find this. I found this at McFadden Dill Hardware Shop. They have a smaller lip, they have a more wider one. I got the small one because all I needed to do is basically go around my sheet metal. Now the reason why I'm putting this, um, previously before I put this thing on there, I sprayed it with spray paint and make sure it was nice and clean. Then after that dried up, then you put the lip on there. Now this is rubber, has aluminum within it, um, and it grabs really well. The reason why I'm putting it is for one, to keep water out and I don't want rust to spread in there. And two, if I do, if my tire decides to rub or anything like that, it's not gonna get shredded, okay? So that's already been done on the front. I'm doing it to the back, only to the outer layer and the inner layer is far behind it. And then, like I said, I'm still gonna put sealant on the inside so no water goes from the fender well inside the actual fender because that'll create rust and things like that. So this is what it looks like here. You can just kind of tell. There's still a small little gap there, which I'm gonna fill with some kind of a silicone or something, I don't know, foam and then silicone. I have no clue what I'm gonna do yet. But just use something if you're gonna cut through both layers. If not, like I said, weld around this whole thing and make sure it's filled so no water can go inside that's the proper way of doing it all right for the front it's only one sheet of metal you just need a lip like this you should be all right make sure you paint before it okay i'm gonna go ahead and put the fender flare now on and show you guys how that looks all right boys so there you have it it's fully mounted now um again make sure you guys uh insulated really nicely because you don't want water to go in anywhere so this is what it looks like all the way around Looks pretty damn good. This piece I haven't done yet. I am going to have to either, I don't know, I'm thinking about, it's, what's probably gonna happen is I'm gonna have to mold that into the car, which is probably gonna happen um, bec because I am uh, bondoing a lot of pieces on the car because they're scratched up from the accident. So that's gonna be molded into the car and it's gonna be raised because there's a, quite a bit of a gap here now. Because that trimming, once you add it, it pushes out the fender flare a little bit. So now you have a bigger gap here. So I did put a little bit more of a door edge trimming um, right here on the inside. So it covers up that little bunkness here. But I didn't put any on this side because it would hit. So I suggest you, and this is double sticky tape by the way here on the corners. And that's not going anywhere. I've had it like that before, and this screw here is going to hold it in place, so it's not going anywhere. Oh! So, next mod, we're making our brake calipers Brembo, because all of the rice. They're not Brembo, they're Bimbo. No, it says Brembo, dude. We good. Oh yeah, this is stencils, buddy. Next thing, cleaning out the calipers, sticking these on, painting them. We got Brembos. I got two. And I got white caliper paint. I don't have white caliper paint. So, uh, this is what it looks like without the trimming, so you guys can see. It is quite quite nicely flushed on this side. Um, this was obviously the second, <laughs> the second side that I did, so this one came out much easier and better than the opposite side. So, of course, once you get more experience, you get perfect at this. But you see how there's barely any hole here now because the trim is not there. Um, and this is nicely flushed. So. Once you add the, the trim, you would have a bigger hole here. Hopefully, when you guys are placing them on different cars, um, your actual, you know, you'll have more than one hole here. So try to get it to where the screws are holding it here and here instead of just in the middle. In my car, that's how it is. There's nothing I could do about it. But in some other cars, you could, um, you can get away with just moving this over or the fender flare over enough to where you have two bolts at least on, on, on the door side so that said that's what it's going to look like so this side is done now show you guys real quick again so completely finished that front front end is done well it has been done actually so i just wanted to show you guys how that looks we are going to have a little bit of a vent until we fix that issue there with the bondo but we're gonna make it look real nice. I'm not molding all the fender flares, like I said, I'm only molding the little door piece there. So um, that's gonna be nice and flush as well. Until then, it's just gonna chill like that. I'm not tripping about it.
there you have it boys i hope you guys enjoyed that video of fender flaring the mazda speed 3 um she looks amazing i like it with the white body kit type of a deal it looks pretty legit um the wheels on the front let's see what are my specs on the wheels they're 17 by 9 rpf ones plus 45 offset with um 45 mil spacer on the front and a 50 mil spacer on the back that way they are pretty flush with the fender flares and stuff like that so i like how that fitment looks and it looks amazing um the car is now on coilovers it used to not be on coilovers now we have bc coilovers um they are adjusted to pretty much the softest setting three clicks in only um for dailying and then once i go on uh, an autocross or anything like that i do stiffen them up so um what else that's it i hope you guys enjoyed that video Please smash the thumbs up if you guys liked it and uh, learned something from this and, you know, figuring out how to install your own fender flares. It's not that big of a deal, to be honest. You know, cutting your fenders is probably the scariest thing that you could do. But other than that, um, everything else is pretty straightforward as long as you, you follow the correct directions and things like that. Uh, make sure you do insulate and you paint anything that you grind it or anything like that because rust will spread over time once you get car washes or anything water will go in there so make sure you try to insulate every single little piece that doesn't have paint on that way you have no issues with rust in the future other than that i'll see you guys in the next one and don't forget what's behind you doesn't matter